The What's the Fuss campaign communicates to the community the critical role medical research plays in the health and wellbeing of all Australians and how this Medical Research Future Fund will further enhance these benefits. This community-led campaign is coordinated by the MRFF Action Group, an alliance of peak bodies representing health and medical researchers and patient groups, along with community business leaders who support this research. And we're grateful to the many patients, some of whom are here today, researchers and passionate medical research advocates who have generously given of their time for this campaign. Canadians are great at celebrating our sporting success, but we don't do so well when it comes to acknowledging our research achievements. I doubt that there are many of us who know that the difference, for example, between type 1 and type 2 diabetes was discovered in Melbourne. And it was Tasmanian researchers who discovered the critical link between babies sleeping on their tummies and SIDS. And of course, there are countless other medical research success stories that are truly and deeply Australian. This campaign will help our community build an appreciation for what health and medical research has achieved and can continue to achieve in this country, thanks to the MRFF. The campaign is also an opportunity for us to share our stories about health and medical research, both how it's helped us and our loved ones and how it can help the community at large. Connie Johnson, where are you, Connie? There she is in the bright pink, slightly dark pink, is one such person who has shared her story selflessly and honestly to a community at large during the course of getting this MRFF up. The community to value the MRFF, see it as the community's fund so that they appreciate why it's important that this sustainable fund grows to its true potential. Um, the landmark Medical Research Future Fund, established by this coalition government and supported by the parliament, heralds the single largest boost in health and medical research funding in Australia's history and breaks new ground for health and medical research in this country. The researchers and patients here today can attest to just how important this sort of investment is. They and others know well the many benefits from well-considered, carefully planned investment in health and medical research. Prevention of ill health, better care of patients, a better health system, and gains in the wider economy and national wealth. To disperse almost half a billion dollars for health and medical research over the Ford estimates. This funding will address medical research priorities, drive innovation, improve delivery of healthcare, boost the efficiency and effectiveness of the health system and contribute to economic growth. The Medical Research Future Fund will provide stability and predictability in funding for medical research and innovation into the future, with the capital to be preserved in perpetuity. The Medical Research Future Fund adds to the research funding allocated by the National Health and Medical Research Council. The Medical Research Future Fund will be administered by the Australian Medical Research Advisory Board, who will provide me with independent advice. The board will have up to eight members with expertise across medical research and innovation, health policy, commercialisation, experience and knowledge in philanthropy and in consumer issues, and translation of research into applications in frontline medical practice. In other words, the advisory board will be well and truly fit for purpose. The board's key responsibilities, which are outlined in the recent Medical Research Future Fund Act, will be to develop the Australian Medical Research and Innovation Strategy and Priorities. This is a significant set of responsibilities which won't be undertaken lightly. Importantly, it means the board will be required to consult with the health and medical research sector and other expert parties. The strategy and priorities developed by the advisory board will also be central in ensuring public accountability in relation to the use of funds from the Medical Research Future Fund. Every two years, I will report to Parliament on how the disbursements meet the strategy and priorities identified by the advisory board. I, of course, saw the Health Minister at the time. This is something that it's exciting concept to me is that it will last, it will continue. It will build. Changing Australian medical discoveries could be just around the corner. Can I finally acknowledge 
and recognise the patients who are here in the room with us today. Um, as we work with something as exciting as this and as, as this fund, and I visit clinicians, I visit researchers, I visit hospitals, I talk to people in laboratories, we think about industry and I mention growth and jobs, we must always remember that we build the system for the patients. And I'm always keen to hear what they think, what they want and what they need. Strong supporter of medical research. We proved that in government when we committed large amounts of money to health and medical research, including building many of the new medical research institutes, many of you work out of, uh, across the country. Our support for medical research is why we did support the establishment of the MRFF, despite concerns about the way it was funded and the way it was established. I'm very pleased that Simon McCann is here today, who I've met with in recent times, and as you know, was responsible for the strategic review of health and medical research, and I acknowledge that Mark Butler, Butler the former Minister for Medical Research in the Labor Government, is here with us as well. Labor commissioned the review to explore the challenges faced by the sector, but more critically for us as policy makers, to try and ensure that the perennial issue of our continued failure to consistently translate health and medical research into clinical care was actively addressed. The report still, I think, provides the blueprint for a growing a successful health and medical research sector in Australia, especially support for mid-career researchers, the pathways to commercialisation and opportunities for cross-sector collaboration. But more importantly, that we improve healthcare in this country. I strongly hope the Medical Research Advisory Board takes heed of its recommendations. We know there are very real challenges for health and medical research as we have more and more researchers doing more and more fantastic work across this country and the pool of money becomes harder and harder to stretch across that research and researchers. There is a real challenge heading down the pathway now around what is going to happen with the employment of substantial numbers of health and medical researchers come the end of this year. We very much hope that this fund will invest in the best possible health and medical research based on independent peer review and then on the advice, as the Minister has said, of experts in the field independent of government. Labor looks very much forward to working with the sector as the Medical Research Future Fund evolves into the next decade. Thank you. I attended and addressed a rally in my electorate of Melbourne where thousands of researchers took to the steps of State Library in their lab coats. Um, and I've been to a few demos in my time, and can I tell you, it was a doozy. Um, the, uh, you couldn't see the State Library from down on Swanson Street because of the throngs of people who had turned out in response to um, some media suggestions that the health and medical research budget might have been under threat. Not only did you see researchers turned out, but you saw many of the businesses based in uh, my area of Melbourne, but you saw also uh, leaders within the uh, local uh, Melbourne community, but critically, uh, patients, family members, people who, were, um, who knew someone who'd been touched by disease or who'd been touched by illness and who had benefited or who hoped to benefit in some way from some of the groundbreaking medical research that was being conducted. And that was a show, I think, that in Australia there is enormous public support for the work that is done by medical researchers day in, day out. Support not only for what you do for the community, um, but for what you also do for our economy. Um, coming out of that campaign, we learned a number of things, thanks in part to Simon McKean. We learned, for example, that since 2009, Australia has made more every year uh, exporting health and medical products than we did exporting cars. Um, when the car industry gets into trouble, it is rightly front page news and we have a national discussion about what to do uh, about it. Um, and yet we seem to think nothing over recent years of dipping into health and medical research budgets every time uh, money got tight. Uh, we need to change the culture in this country so that a job in research is treated as importantly as a job making a car. Uh, and we need to change the way governments think about it. And that is why the Greens were very, very pleased to work with the government on the establishment of this fund. It allows Australia to start to change the debate about the way that we think about health and medical research. To have something uh, that might exist in perpetuity 
to ensure that kind of civility that uh, means young researchers don't just look overseas as a place to continue their careers but decide to stay here in Australia. I think this will be part of the uh, story, or part of changing the um, picture economically for health and medical research, um, but also culturally as well. The, uh, I live in hope that we will one day um, have every politician from every political party quaking in their boots at the thought of another health and medical research lead campaign against them if they ever dare touch the health and medical research budget. Uh, and I think if we can get to the point where uh, something like the Health and Medical Research Fund, and including um, the other sources of funding that can't be cut in order to fund this, we, we need new money to fund this. Um, but if we can get to the point where the, health, uh, where the Medical Research Future Fund is treated as a sacred cow in Australian politics, then I think we'll be much better as a country for it. Um, lastly, can I also pay tribute to um, people like Connie and some of the others who I've met during the course of this journey and this campaign. Um, what became apparent to me is that so many people who are campaigning for this fund might not actually benefit from it themselves. They were going to do this for people who were coming after them, and the hope was that no one would ever have to go through what they are going through. And that spirit, I think, is something that is a good lesson for all of us here, and I think it's fair to say it's characterised the spirit in which the discussions have taken place about the MRFF here in Parliament. And um, I'm pleased to have been uh, played a part in supporting this, uh, the government's initiative because if we can leave this um, for future generations, then I think uh, they are going to thank us for it as well. Thank you. What's the fuss? The fuss is for heart disease. The single biggest killer of Australians. The fuss is for dementia. And there's thousands diagnosed every month. The fuss is for mental health. For the diseases we know nothing about. The fuss is that without investment, medical research in Australia will fall behind. And hope for ourselves and our loved ones will disappear. So the fuss is for all of us. And for our future.